few minutes about embarrassing. But see, now it's in the right place. I can't see where where, where, the, where the microphone is. Let's put it down. So here we know where it is, and now I can find it, and I won't be embarrassed anymore. Anyway, this is that was enough of that little stuff. I want to talk to you a little bit about Newton's three laws and some implications of them and how we use them, and also my important thing that, particularly if you're in some sort of a technical thing, and most of you are, if you're, if you're environmental science or if you're in geoscience or if, or if you're in computer science, at some point you're going to have to deal with the idea of units. And this is a good idea to talk about about units, even though we're talking about, about Newton's laws. You need to be aware of the idea of, uh, of units. Let me move this a little bit so you can talk about Newton's laws first. Newton's first law, oops, Newton's first law, uh, you've heard a lot of it before, and see if we can make sense of it. An object that's initially, when we first start thinking about it, at rest, or initially moving, and this second part's a very important, it's either at rest, not moving, or it's moving at a constant speed in a straight line. That means constant velocity. Okay? And it will never stop doing that unless you apply an external force to it. Hmm. Okay, what does that really mean? Well, that means that if you're if you're in a car and you're sitting at McDonald's and you and you you stopped at the at the, the window to pay, unless you hit the gas, it's not going to move. The car's not going to move, right? So that means you're going to sit there until you begin to, until until external force caused by the engine is makes the car move and makes you leave the McDonald's window. Um, now let's talk about but what else does that mean? Uh, if you if you just bought a cup of coffee at the window, you were just at the McDonald's, and let's just say you have a console right next to to uh, your your seat, and you put the the coffee on the console, and it's a nice flat console, but there's there's no cup holder there. It's just nice and flat. Now if you put the put the cup of coffee down, and then you you're still not moving, and you say I put my, my seat belt on because that's a safe thing to do. Put your seatbelt on, put both hands on the wheel, and punch the gas. What's going to happen to the to the uh, to the coffee? You all heard about that lawsuit about ten years ago or longer? You maybe you're all too young, but somebody did that at McDonald's once, and when they they they, they left it, and the coffee spilled on them, and when it spilled on them, of course, it burnt them, and it was not comfortable. Why did it do that? It did that because of Newton's first law, and maybe as we'll discuss in a few minutes, Newton's third law. Because the coffee was happy sitting there in, in the on the console, not wanting to move, and so it didn't move. Because and then, then when the car moved out from under it, there was no force acting on the coffee to make it move. So, so it was going to stay at that constant speed, zero, un until a force was applied to it. Nothing was applied, so the car got from under it, the coffee spilled, it was a mess, lawyers got rich. What can I tell you? That's how we think about that. Now also, there's another one I want to, I want to tell you about. We say constant speed in a straight line, that means constant velocity. If you're out there on the freeway, moving along in your, in your car, and you've got your, you've got your, your coffee is now on the console again, you didn't learn your lesson the first time, it's on the coffee or on the console again, and you're driving a constant, let's just say, I don't care, 50 miles an hour, and you want to, you want to take the exit, which is a gradual right turn, you want to take the exit, and you're taking it at 50 miles an hour, you're not going to slow down, you're not going to speed up, you're going to keep going at the same speed, right? You're going at the same speed, and you take that turn, but it ends up being kind of a sharp turn, so you take it, and but the coffee's just sitting there. But when you take that speed, what's going to happen to the coffee? Think about that. Think about what you have to do with something like that. It's going to it's going to move again. This time, because you're moving in a straight line initially, and now you're turning. You know, when you're turning, you're changing your velocity, because velocity is the same thing. It has two parts. It has magnitude, how fast you're going, and direction. So now you're moving, so when you're changing velocity, that means you're experiencing acceleration. 
What does what does the car want? Do the, the coffee want to do now? It wants to keep going the direction it was going in, which was straight ahead. So as you're uh, as you're turning, the coffee the car is turning to the right. The coffee's going. No, I'm going to go straight ahead. So it's going to you're going to your perception would be it's going to spill possibly on your leg or on your console or something, but it's going to try and stay in that same direction. Two aspects of inertia. It's interesting. It's a little bit weird, but it's interesting. Newton's second law of motion is just, the, and it's described well in a, in a movie that you might have just seen a few minutes ago, uh, that it just says that force is equal to the product of mass and acceleration, or however you want to say it is, acceleration is the, the ratio of, of, of force to mass, however you want to say it. But those are, those are, uh, uh, the usual expression of it, F equals MA is a pretty famous expression. It's almost as famous as E equals MC squared. Um, and, and you'll get into that more this week and next. If you have any questions about how to use that, let me know. I'm going to give you a couple of really simple examples. I hope they're simple. Uh, and also about how units are described as well. Let's talk about that. Okay, so here's a, here is a, uh, an example here of uh, a way to describe motion using Newton's second law. You got a 10 kilogram mass on a frictionless surface. This could be a 10 kilogram puck, hockey puck, on, on an ice surface. It's essentially frictionless, right? That's pretty, pretty close. We apply to that mass, 10 kilogram mass, a 5 Newton force. Now, if you've not thought about this before, you're going, what the heck is a kilogram? What the heck is a newton? A new a, a kilogram is a measure of of mass, and you can look that up in your book. And you, if you want me to help you with that, I'd be happy to. But let's just assume you you know about this right now. And it's subjected to a five newton force. Newton are units of force in the in the metric system. It means the same thing as a pound in the English system, but it but it is called called newtons and i'll explain to you why in just a second let's go back and look at the, the expression newton's second law uh well we can use newton's second law to find that acceleration that i just asked you about you're going to take the mass that you just uh, uh we just talked about and we're going to divide that uh into uh, uh into the force when we do that we're going to get acceleration now this is the weird part, and this is the part about units that I like to emphasize because uh, newtons are what are called derived units. Derived units mean that they're that they're given that name units, but that but that that name newton, but that doesn't necessarily mean what does mean what we think it means. We, but but we kind of gave it that name. If you think about this, force is in the newtons, mass is in the kilograms, but I want to get my units of acceleration need to be meters per second per second, meters per square second to get acceleration. That's the definition of acceleration. Well, over here I've got 5 newtons. Here I've got 10 kilograms. The 5 and the 10 divide out into 0.5. In order to make sense of this, I have to realize that a newton means a kilogram meter per second squared. Kilogram meter per second squared. I'm multiplying those two quantities together. Those quantities have, have units of kilograms and meters per second squared. I'm then also dividing that by kilograms. So in order to make this work out units-wise, you've got to realize this, that a kilogram divided by a kilogram, anything divided by itself is 1. So that just divides out. And so we get consistent units here. We want acceleration. That is just 0.5 meters per square second hope that didn't confuse you. If it did, hit me up with a question. I'll be happy to go over it in more detail and not confuse you more. Let's talk about the net force just real briefly and real quickly because force is a vector. So if we have here in our, our problem, we have net force applied. We just said it was five newtons. But, let, but let's just say it's no longer on a, on a uh, hockey rink uh, uh, frictionless surface. It's now on a, on a carpet. And we're saying, okay, we've got, uh, we have a, a one newton frictional force. That means that we've got one newton, or pardon me, we've got fi five newtons going off, let's just say, in the right, and one newton in the left, because we're, we're going the opposite direction. That leaves four newtons 
that are that can be used to accelerate the hockey puck or whatever it is, the big hockey puck. So that means we've got 5 minus 1 is 4, 4 newtons per, per, per 10 kilograms. We've got 0.4 units per square second. All that means is, you take away all this gobbledygook, that you're going to accelerate less quickly. Your acceleration here was 0.5, here it's 0.4 because of, because of, the, of, the, of the 1 newton force. I hope that makes sense. One of the things we want to just bring up here, the weight due to gravity, weight something due to gravity. One of the things we say this sometimes, and we don't really mean what we say when we talk about this, there is an acceleration due to gravity that's due to, to mass. And we're going to discuss that uh, in your text in a little bit, but, but I want to bring this up right now just to tell you about it. There is an acceleration due to gravity that's essentially 10 meters per square second on the Earth's surface. Uh, the actual number really is 9.8, but when I wrote this, I was using a different text. The text says you can use 10. In many calculations, you can use 10 to, to, to name that. So gravity is constant wherever you are. doesn't make any difference how much you weigh, how much the object weighs you're talking about, or how much, I should say, to say it properly, I should say how much mass you have. Uh, gravity is... Uh, Gravity is a force that causes masses to accelerate either positively or negatively uh, due, due to their, their weight. Um, so this, this uh, 9.8 meters per square second is only a function of where we are on the Earth. But that's considered, 1g is considered 9.8 meters per square second. That's the acceleration due to gravity. So when you've heard people or read about this in books, when we talk about g forces or g acceleration, that means how many multiples of gravity we're experiencing. Like if you're in a, in a rocket going to the moon or orbit, usually they try to limit that to up to about three g's of acceleration. That means the acceleration that your body is experiencing is about three times the acceleration of gravity doesn't necessarily mean your whole body is going to weigh three times your normal body weight, but it could. If you want to talk about that some more, I can, we can as well. Uh, let me move, I think I can move this, yeah, put that up there. Uh, we can talk about weight in terms of a special case of Newton's, Newton's second law, that weight W equals mass and acceleration of gravity. Now, if you want to, you can just kind of figure that out. You can say, okay, well, how much is that? Um, that's a mass. In this case, would be uh, 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 it would be whatever mass we're talking about. Acceleration of gravity is we multiply by that, and we, we get weight here uh, as uh, uh, how much we weigh, and that could be weight in terms of. Uh, uh, newtons or in, in, in terms of, uh, of pounds makes no difference yeah now this is my great slide that I when I pulled this out here a couple of weeks ago I was looking at it and uh, you guys get to tell me where the mistake is I bet you I bet you catch it uh, remember just talking again about units and weight is a force and in the English system, the one we usually use, sorry, I'm at your ditching, you know, the one we usually use, uh, uh, 100 pounds is the, the, the units of, of force in the English system. Now, a definition for this is that one pound is equal to 4.45 newtons. Why is that so? I have no idea. That's just what somebody told me in a textbook back years and years ago. That means that 100 pounds equals 445 newtons. Okay, uh, and so so we'll go back and look at our expression for uh, weight and mg and things like that. We can say okay, 445 newtons is equal to the quantity of the mass of the object times 9.8. If I want to find out what the mass is, 445 divided by 99.8 or 9.8, which is about 44.5. I don't know why I wrote this number here, but that's one of the things you can tease me about is that I wrote numbers down incorrectly, and then when I was making my recording, I didn't bother to change it because I'm goofy like that sometimes. You know what it is now. It's going to be essentially 44.5 uh, uh, kilograms uh, 
that's how much will cause 100, 100 pounds of force. And I'm going to fix that before I do this again next time. Okay, so... Uh